Welcome to the Singularity Day. My name is Marcel. Thank you for having me. And it's uh, my pleasure to tell you something today about how to democratize AI to empower individuals and organization and society. So I'm from Microsoft. I'm a cloud solution architect here in Germany. And I work closely with a lot of customers in the different fields of AI and machine learning. So first of all, I asked the computer, hell, Marcel, who are you? And uh, that's what the computer gives me back. So it seems that I have some kind of similarity with a Labrador. Um, it recognizes that I'm a man that looks like 42 years old. And that's actually not too bad because I'm 40 years old. I have some um, similarity with an actor called Scott Guffey. And uh, as you can also see, it very well described uh, my face. So I have brown hairs, I have a little bit of a mustache, a beard, uh, some sideburns, and I don't wear any glasses or makeup. So actually not too bad what computers can today. So let's have a look how you can use this in your projects within your companies. So when we look into um, the field of AI and um, data, then um, data is clearly the basis of the digital transformation and the amount of data will continue to increase. We see progression of the connectivity of devices, households, production plans and more and more intelligence and devices that receive and produce data. So it's very clear that data is key for the digital transformation. And it's up to the companies to make this data usable for themselves and to create market advantages in order to maintain long-term competitiveness. So our mission at Microsoft is to empower every person on the planet. Sorry, our mission at Microsoft is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And that's clearly also something that we do here in AI. So really helping you leveraging AI technologies. And you don't have to be just a data scientist in order to use this. So we really want to bring AI and technologies to everyone so that everyone can use these technologies on their own level. So let's have a look. So how do we do this? So we call it the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. And um, what's clear here is that we know that most of you certainly have a hybrid multi-cloud strategy, including edge concepts. So this means that you have your data and also your applications running on-prem, in Azure or in any other public clouds and on all and on small edge devices. So when we talk about uh, companies that want to leverage AI, maybe in factory floors or in supermarkets, then it's clear that um, there need to be also some kind of connectivity. And we offer the broad spectrum of really bringing everything together in one approach. So as you can also see, um, our customers operate worldwide and we need solutions that work all over the world. And Azure is the computer of the world and Azure is global. So we are uh, available in 61 regions over the world. That is more than AWS and Google combined. And with our data centers, uh, we achieve um, more than 90 compliance certifications. And Azure really offers global reach with local presence so that companies can really meet organizations and needs. We enable you to reduce costs, time and complexity when operating on global infrastructure with local data protection requirements. So with Azure today, you can really build and deploy applications with infinite scale all over the world. AI. So when we look into um, the achievements and the breakthrough in the recent years of AI, then we already started with in Microsoft in 1990 when Bill Gates founded um, Microsoft Research. And as you can see, Microsoft Re Research is uh, available and um, located all over the world, from the US into Europe, but also China. And what researchers did in the past years, and uh, so a lot of um, researchers um, worked on, on these achievements here, is really making AI as good as we humans are. So in, in all the fields that we humans um, can do, like understanding, of certain context, vision, um, listening, speech. Um, yeah. So these are the fields where we really try to build computers and AI models as good as we humans can do this. And then 
we're going to test these models against the human performance. So we show humans pictures, we show a computer a picture, and then we compare the error rate. So who is um, as good as the human? And how many errors does the human do? How many errors does the computer do? And as you can see in all the fields, we now have um, human um, comparity. So this means like we are on the same level uh, with AI technologies as humans are. And I think this is a great achievement that researchers achieved over the last 50, 60 years. Question is now, what can you do in order to leverage those models? And as you can also see, like for example here with language models is that they're evolving very fast. Um, what we can see here are different language models and to get a feeling of uh, the complexity, but also about um, the, um, the, the quality um, of those language models, um, it's more or less represented by uh, the size of parameters that are used in order to train those models. And as you can see now, um, the, the, the model here in January 2020, there was a language model that was trained with 17 billion parameters. And if you look into the latest report of State of AI 2020, then you see now that this is all so already um, beaten up um, with a model that was trained by OpenAI and this has now 175 billion parameters. So a really huge complex model that really achieves a great performance uh, on natural language processing. But also um, this leads to a huge complexity because um, already the cost in order to train these models are very high. So you can count roughly one dollar per thousand parameters, which means that training this GPT-3 model um, with 175 billion parameters costs you around 10 million. And that's a lot of money that not all companies can afford. So it's really about the researchers and the big um, technologies company to bring this forward and then providing services that you can use so that you don't train language processing models on your own. What we offer as Microsoft are two fields here. So one is what we call pre-built AI that we offer as uh, Azure Cognitive Services. And then we have custom AI models that we uh, offer with Azure Machine Learning. And let's have a look um, how this can be used um, in your um, uh, scenarios and in your projects. So first of all, let's look in the pre-built AI models. So as already um, seen in the, in the beginning, um, where the fields of AI, um, uh, where, the, where the researchers work in the different fields of AI, also cognitive services are split up to these different fields. So we have cognitive services for vision, we have cognitive services for speech, for search, language detection, translations, and decision making. And let's have a deeper look um, what you can do with those services. So I have a small demo in order to demonstrate this to you. So when we go to uh, the website of Azure Cognitive Services and when we scroll down a little bit, we can see here the different cognitive services that you can use. And in general, how these cognitive services are going to work, it's like uh, we host um, them as a managed service and you can just connect to them via an API core. So this means you, you have an API, a REST endpoint, where you can send uh, data like pictures or speech or other kind of data to the service and then you get information back. So let's have a look, um, for example, in the vision area. So we go to custom vision, uh, sorry, we go to we go to computer vision and when we scroll down, we can test this service. So there is already a picture here, but let's take another picture. So I copy here a pass of a picture, paste it, and then I click submit. So now I send the picture to the service and I get information back. And as I can do this over this interface here, of course, um, you can do this in your own applications. So this is just a small demo. And as you can see here, the picture detects the object. So there's a boundary around our object and uh, the picture thinks it's a bottle. So you can see here, um, it, it detects that um, the computer thinks that this is here a bottle, it's a tableware, and, um, and the confidence that this is a bottle is just 50%. So I'm not really confident that this is really a bottle, 
but we can also have a look and see there are more information. So it, it really figures out that this is a can and this is a confidence of 91%. It's a drink um, and it has blue colors and, um, and it's a beverage and so on. So it even detects that it seems to be an aluminum can with a confidence of around about 70%. So as you can see, the computer already gives us a lot of information back from pictures. And with the confidence, we can, um, this is our quality measure, we can um, use this quality measure in order to see how confident um, the computer is with um, this performance. So, and um, you can try this out, for example, with your own pictures. So, but in the case, for example, here, where we have uh, cans, we could have, for example, Pepsi cans and Coca-Cola cans. So the computer vision doesn't really understood that this is a Pepsi can or a Coca-Cola can. It just understands, oh, this is a kind of a aluminum can. And in order to really taking those pretend models um, and then customize it to your needs, we have something that we call custom vision. And we have this customization option with all our cognitive services, whether it's with vision or speech, language and translation and so on. So you can really taking those models and then adjust it to your needs. So let's have a look how we do this in this case. So when we go to customvision.ai, we can sign in here. And I sign in with my account. And then I already prepared a project and um, this project is called Soda Can Classifier. And what I do here is like I can create a new project and then I can just upload pictures as I did here. So I upload pictures, for example, here I can say add pictures and then I pick the files that I want to upload and then I can give them text. So in this case, I uploaded 29 Coca-Cola pictures from Coca-Cola cans. I uploaded 26 pictures from Pepsi cans and 20 pictures from soda cans. And then I, did, I, I can click on train. And what then happens is that um, in the background, we use transfer learning in order to take the cognitive service and train them with your data that you're gonna provide. And after this model has been trained, takes some minutes, um, you, get a pre you get a model performance um, from your trained iteration. So in this day, as you can see here, um, I have an iteration um, that I trained a model six days ago. And um, yeah, so the precision recall is very high because of um, this small number of pictures, but it's good enough um, for this demo here. And we also get a warning that the image count is not uh, very high. And um, for um, real projects, we should have more images. But for our um, example here, that's pretty very good. So, and then what I can do then is I can do a prediction with my model and I can just upload the, um, the Pepsi can, which I already did here. And then the computer says, ah, it's not only a can, it's the Pepsi can. So it can really distinguish between the different um, yeah, uh, texts, like between the different sorts of uh, cans like Pepsi, soda or Coca-Cola. So this means like we can tr take pre-trained models where we put as Microsoft a lot of effort in to really make them uh, very good, uh, but they are trained more on general, general purposes. And you really can take your own pictures or your own sound files or your own data and then really adjust them to your business needs. And I think that is very good. And um, as you can see here, you don't need any kind of code writing um, in order to do this. Of course, also behind custom vision, there's an API. So everything that you can do here in the interface, you can also do uh, via an API and also use, for example, Python in order to do uh, image uploads, taggings, uh, model training, and so on. So this whole process can also automate it, but for the demo, I use the normal interface. So let's go back here. So what we have seen so far, uh, where the domain specific pre-trained models, as you can see on the uh, top line. And uh, when we look at what you can do with machine learning on Azure, um, there's a bunch of possibilities um, that we're gonna offer for you. As we started um, with the uh, top line here, is we started with the pre-trained models um, that we as Microsoft are offering and constantly um, evolving. And um, they are all uh, available 
uh, with the possibility to adapt them uh, with custom possibilities like custom vision, custom speech, custom language and so on. And if you go down a little bit in, in the details, you can of course use our ecosystem and our frameworks and our tools to, to build your own models uh, with custom models. So really going into this uh, space of Azure mach machine learning and machine learning in general and really going into coding and, uh, and training your models um, on your own. And for this, we offer you a rich uh, functionalities that starts with uh, a similar tool set where you can use the tools of your choice. So whether it's Visual Studio Code, Azure Notebooks, it's RStudio, it's any Jupyter environment. So you can really work with any data science tool of your choice. And then you can also leverage this with the typical popular frameworks um, that are available today. So um, whether it's PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, um, it's um, Spark, um, it doesn't matter. So you can use every kind of framework of your choice. And then we offer you services uh, where you can leverage the cloud, for example, for, for high scale training. So this means you can uh, test on your computer and then use the cloud, for example, for training. And so you say, I want to have a cluster. I want to have a trainings cluster and then you train your model and then you shut down the cluster and then you pay only, for example, for the cluster training. Um, we offer you here a service called Azure Machine Learning to do this. And if you are in the field of Spark, then you probably want to look into Azure Databricks. Um, that is a very good service if you go into uh, Spark trainings. And then this comes with a powerful infrastructure. So this means your trainings cluster can be equipped with CPUs, with GPUs, with FPGAs, whatever you would like. And um, the good thing is that we can um, take then those models and not only running them in the cloud, but also maybe running them on small edge devices. So as I stated in the beginning, um, Azure is the cloud that really encapsulates the whole environment and the whole um, world um, of the different possibilities. So training in the cloud, running them locally, everything is possible uh, really um, to your needs. So let's have a look how this is going to look like. So what we have here to run models, for, for example, on small edge devices, is something that we call Azure IoT Edge. And as you can see here, for example, we have um, two um, possible devices that can be leveraged. One is a Raspberry Pi and the other one is an NVIDIA card and that is equipped with GPUs and powerful processing power. And then you can use on the left hand side um, cognitive services or Azure machine learning to train your models and then deploy them in a custom container, um, in a Docker container. And then you can deploy them via IoT Hub um, to Azure IoT Edge. So IoT Hub is our engine in order to manage those devices, in order to publish software updates, in order to secure the devices, but also in order to publish um, the models um, to these devices. And then the container that is here uh, be prepared is then published down on this small device and then you can have a different kind of containers running side by side. There can be a streaming container, a container that collects data, but also a container um, that uh, runs your model. And let's have a look how this could look like. So in order to test this out, we have several developer kits here for you. Uh, one is with the NVIDIA Jets Nano that you can use that is equipped with GPUs uh, where you can really do um, great inference uh, in, in high performance. And then we have, for example, uh, uh, something that is called the Vision AI Dev Kit uh, that we developed with Qualcomm. That is a camera that is equipped um, with a microphone, with cameras, with a small PC, small PC or small um, computer inside. And this can also run Azure IoT Edge. And then you can also deploy AI models on this camera. So I built an example for you in order to demonstrate how this is going to look like. So in our example before, where we trained a model to understand the different cans, we now simulate a production line. So let's assume we have a production line that fills up those cans and then the cans run um, on, on, on the floor, on the shop floor. And then we want to detect if uh, cans fall apart or not. And uh, this we can perfectly do um, with the custom vision uh, uh, model. Uh, that we trained with the custom vision model and then we deploy the model to this uh, edge nano and then we're going to see um, how this model performs so let's have a look
So I go back here. And uh, first of all, I want to show you in the Azure portal, we have deployed an Azure IoT Hub. And when we scroll down here, we can have a look to our edge devices. So what we see here now are there are three edge devices that are connected with our Azure IoT Hub. The Vision AI Dev Kit is currently offline. And then there's a Raspberry Pi running. And then there is my Jetson Nano Dev Kit that is also running. So I can click on the Jetson Nano and then it shows me what is running on this Nano. And um, so I have here different modules. And um, so the Edge Agent and the Edge Hub are the modules that are used by Azure IoT Edge. That uh, is our basic um, yeah, system that is operating on top um, in, in, in the uh, Jetson Nano. And then there is one container deployed that is called here NVIDIA DeepStream. So we are using the DeepStream APIs uh, in combination with our trained model to do real-time object detection. So this container is up and running um, and my uh, device is connected. Now I need a model. So what I can do is I can go back here and I created another model that is called SodaCans. Uh, and in this case, I doesn't train uh, a classifier, I trained an object detection model. So, and the principle is the same. So I upload um, pictures and then I have to take the objects. So let's have a look. So in this case, I uploaded this picture and then I take the objects with the categories that I want to detect. So in this case, I want to detect if um, the cans are up or down. So if they're standing up and uh, working correctly on my production line, or if they're really falling down. And then I want to detect this as an error. So in this case, I see cans from the up, up side perspective. And here, for example, uh, we have one can from that is standing upside and one can that uh, is down here. So we, and what we do is like we draw these bounding boxes and then label uh, the different objects. So I did this with some pictures here. And then again, I uh, click train and then the model is trained. And when I click here on performance, I see the different iterations and it's the same as we have seen before. So we get some nice quality measures like precision, recall, um, and we also get the warning that again, we are using a little bit too less pictures, but also for this demo, it's good enough. And then when this model is trained, I can click on export. And here I have the different options to take this model and then run it somewhere else. So I can run it on a mobile phone, for example, on iOS or Android. I can uh, export it in, in the Onyx uh, intermediate format. I can download it for my Vision AI dev kit, or I can say I want to have a Docker file in order to create a Docker container. And that's what I did. So I took this Docker file, I created a Docker container uh, with my model inside, and then I published it to a container registry. And then I could um, yeah, deploy it via the container registry over the IoT hub down on my Nano Edge device. And this is what I already did. So I can go here and start a new deployment and then this one is connected um, to my, um, uh, to my uh, container registry. And then it's sending an information to my um, Jetson Nano. There is a new container for you. And then the Jetson Nano is taking this container and, um, and, and, and is running it uh, on the Nano itself. So let's have a look how this is going to look like. So I can connect them to the video stream of my Jetson Nano. So as we can see here, um, this uh, video stream is now connected via the network to my Jetson Nano. And then here we are simulating three cameras. So it's like um, three cameras detecting uh, in real time side by side um, quality measures and simulating production lines. And as you can see here with the bounding boxes, um, the object um, tries to identify which cans are up and which cans are down. And in the case the cans are falling down, then we get a red circle, a red boundary. Um, and if uh, the cans are up, then everything is fine and we get a green boundary. So as you can see here, we have green bounding boxes. And when uh, one can comes along that is falling down, as here, we get a red bounding box. So this is really real-time object detection on a very powerful device and um, with a custom model and we didn't need to write any lines of code. So it's really very easy to train those models 
And uh, I think this is also perfectly, for example, if you start with small, uh, uh, um, small POCs or small MVPs. So in order to test the uh, use cases and figuring out if the, uh, if the, um, yeah, if your use case is working and if you really get a business case out of it, you don't need to really having data scientists and writing long lines of code. You can really start very easy today in order to get the first models. And if you are sure that um, the, the use case is working, then you can still work on the um, performance of the model. So, and then you can see if those tools bring you to this um, level of quality or if you have to really go down and, and train a custom model. But as you can see here, we want to really encourage developers to use um, services like cognitive services in order to build those nice applications and um, having the possibility to scale and, and, and um, yeah, develop more use cases instead of waiting for the right data scientist. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. So. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is, is the data foundation. So if you think that AI is king, then the data foundation is King Kong. So what does it mean? So um, I think it's very clear that, in, in, and we have seen this um, in the custom vision before, in order to get good models, you need data. And this means like you need to also build a data platform that can handle so your data. So that can automatically connect to your data sources, that can ingest data, that can store the data, cleans the data, and, and then sending this data to your AI models. But I think data platforms and AI capabilities or machine learning has, have to go hand in hand. And uh, what we're going to offer you in Azure is the richest data and AI services that you can imagine in these days. So we have all the different options that come, for example, with um, batch data ingestion, but you can also have stream data ingestion. You can connect to IoT devices. Um, you have a lot of choices in, in case of databases, whether they are SQL databases, MySQL databases, open source databases, NoSQL databases, any kind of flavor you can find here. And this means like with all the different other options, you can build any kind of architecture and software platform that you would like, whether there are for real time or whether they are batch, whether they are combined, it doesn't matter. So we really have all the services that you can use in order to build the platforms that you want to, in order to leverage um, the capabilities um, that uh, are inside of your data. Um, and of course, um, from, uh, so to, to make this uh, clear here, and also in, in order to build a platform really end to end. This means like starting from the sources up to the level um, of the business users. So really, for example, using Power BI to uh, visualize um, the insights um, that you found before. So something where you can really build end to end applications and platforms. And what can you do with those things? So what you do is normally building modern AI solutions, whether they are container based, having managed databases, you're building analytical platforms, AI as we've seen before, so the different uh, models that we can train, or serverless applications. So everything is possible and there's nearly no limit for you in order to build applications in these days. In order to get started, I can recommend Microsoft Learn. So here you can find different step-by-step uh, -step tutorials. We have learning passes for the different uh, groups. So whether they are data engineers, data scientists, business analysts. So please have a look there. And uh, I think um, they are very well um, explained. Um, they come with samples and they are free to use. And uh, you can really use this in order to learn more about the different technologies here. And with that, I say thank you so much for your patience and, and your time. I hope this, um, yeah, uh, my, my talk was interesting to you and in case you have questions or you want to follow up just contact me and with that I say thank you and have a nice singularity day. Bye!